the 16th of August, and in the church timetable calendar, it's the 10th Sunday after Trinity. Today's talk is based on a passage from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28, where Jesus meets a Canaanite woman. If you're unfamiliar with that, you might care to read that before continuing this. Thank you. When I was vicar of St. Osip in Essex, we held a summer mission at a local caravan park. Working with a church army mission team, we supported the outreach, particularly to the young people, but also to the holiday makers in general. Jesus was on a mission as well. The church army only had one week, but he had three years, then his mission was somewhat larger. Like the church army, Jesus had priorities. He knew he could not do everything, so he concentrated on some specific areas, and one of those he mentioned today, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We know that he came to save the whole world, and that the early church did spread rapidly, but during his mission, the vast majority of his contacts and his ministry was to those who followed the Judaic faith. Now, Jesus today, he is faced with a lady who is not Jewish, and he says to this Gentile woman, this Canaanite, one outside the family, that she's asking for something that is for other people. There's no suggestion that Jesus didn't care for Gentiles. Indeed, his final instruction to the disciples before he returned to heaven was to go and make disciples of all nations. But in saying what he did, perhaps Jesus was pushing the woman a little to see how she would react, whether her faith in him was real. And it was. And we should admire her persistence, her courage, her determination. She would not give up. What mother would? Her daughter needed help. Even in the face of the disciples suggesting she's shouting too much, Lord, send her away. Jesus' reaction, she would not be put off. And what a hard-hitting reply that she came up with to Jesus' statement. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table, she says. Okay, give the Jews all you have to give, but let me have the leftovers. That will be enough. This woman displays great faith and a strength of will that's perhaps lacking in his own disciples at that particular time. Jesus is reminded that the boundaries around his ministry were not hard and fast, but were flexible, movable, that the Father's will, the working of the Spirit, could not be contained or confined. And as a result, he responds to her needs. He may not totally change direction and minister to the Gentiles thereafter, but continues on his mission to the Jews. However, he does heal her daughter and openly praises her faith. Even without the COVID situation, in our daily lives, we tend, we tend, towards the company of those we are comfortable with. The outsider tends to make us cautious, wary. Even without the COVID situation, our daily lives tend towards being confined to a pattern, an order, boundaries. We have that expectation to move in certain circles and do certain things with certain people. Our, ten, our lives tend to be limited. And because we're comfortable with that sort of thing in our daily lives, that rolls over into our church life. And what we do as a church, what we put on as a church, what worship we offer, and how we work in the local community, it tends towards the comfortable. 
without realizing we're doing it. We perhaps too often keep the boundaries around us. We end up doing the same sort of things, to the same sort of people, and often with the same sort of result. It's one of the things, when COVID is controlled, that we must consider and pray about. What today's Gospel reminds us is that Jesus shows us the need to be open to God's will, to his Spirit, to his love, his power, and the call to move where we might not normally go, to move outside our comfort zone, reach out to people we might not normally get the chance to walk alongside, even change what we are and how we do things, so that he can draw someone into his love and salvation who might otherwise have been passed by. This period of COVID is a good time to consider, to think some things through. Even with all the turmoil and change, there are still things I'm seeking answers to in my ministry. If ever I think I have all the answers, that's the time I'm going to put myself out to pasture. We must all continue learning and changing our attitudes as we grow in the Christ. And when we consider our mission, we must change in the way we reach out to people with the good news of Christ. Let me give you a personal example. Wendy and Simon will know, weddings and all of that, that even before COVID, restriction on numbers, attending a wedding, I would counsel couples at the preparation event not to make an open invitation to people just turn up at the church. Because inevitably, I would tell them, I would see those people sat out in the side aisles, gazing around, bored to tears, not paying attention, wanting it to be over so they could head to the pub before joining the reception after the wedding breakfast. And when that happened at a marriage, I would be heard muttering in the vestry afterwards about how rude those people were and so on. But where were my priorities? Am I only called to minister to the well-behaved, to those who are comfortable in church, to those who don't know what to expect because they've never been here before? Had I drawn them in more, had I changed what I did and reached out to them, as well as to the rest of the guests, and who knows, they might have returned or at least a seed of faith might have been sown in them. I need to change my approach so that they might change. Drawing on the Canaanite woman's example, we also do well to persist, to have courage, to go on, even when we seem to come up against a brick wall. Remembering the mission in St. Osip, the lead was a church army missioner, Sister Penny, who I'd known previously, lovely lady. And kids would be gathered by a clown going around on a bike, games would be played, and after that, they'd be sat down and Sister Penny would use puppets to tell a Bible story. It was feeding the 5,000 the first day, I can remember. And no sooner as she said she was about to tell them a story, then two of the older lads jumped up, shouting, shouting, boring, 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 and started to walk away. Sister Penny gave as good as she got. She was a bit of a tough cookie and shouted after them as they walked away, how do you know it's boring? You haven't heard it yet. Bless her. And then she continued. And even though one or two more drifted off, others came and sat down to listen, and then stayed to join in the craft activities, our opportunity to chat about our faith. Seeds of faith were sown, I'm sure, in those children and the parents who sat around the edge, good news being shared. And so it would be for us, and we're doing our best 
to share the good news. We may face boring, boring, boring. We may have to let some walk away. We may feel rejected and let down. But if we remain faithful to God, then he will bless us. And more importantly, he will bless those we are sharing with. In these COVID times, in the times that will follow, we are and we will be challenged. Are we living as God wants us to? Is our worship worthy of what God gives us? Are we engaging with the local community in the right way? Are we using the opportunities we have through baptisms, weddings and funerals to good effect? Not just supporting people, but sharing our faith with them. Do visitors to our churches see historical monuments or do they see living in churches? Do those who join us at worship not only get a big welcome, but when they walk away, are they thinking, wow, those people are wonderful, so full of life, of hope and of peace. There's something special happening there. I want to go back. How many do come back? You know the answer to that question as well as I, which sort of suggests we're not quite getting it right yet. There is praying to be done. There is thinking to be done. We need to be open to God's will. We need to seek, to ask, possibly to accept change to the point of feeling uncomfortable. But then Jesus was not very comfortable on the cross when he died for us. 